Log Talk Radio. Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am Caroline Chang, your host. The mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the universal truth of oneness. Spirituality and science both are telling us that we are literally all connected, that we are all one. What you do to another person, you're literally doing it to yourself. Once the world awakens to this universal truth of oneness, there will be peace on earth. So this is my vision and my mission with Awake to Oneness Radio. Um, Today's show was supposed to be Evolving Out Loud with stand-up comedian Kyle Cease. I met Kyle uh, in L.A. this past May at the Agape Revelation Celebration. Uh, he did, he performed there um, during the celebration, and he did an amazing job with comedi- uh, with his com- comedic skills. Okay, okay, he's a com- he's a comic, stand up comic, and he's been a comic for many years. Um, and he now uses his comedy to transform audiences. So um, this morning. When I logged on to my email, I got an email from his assistant, Carrie, that Kyle is ill and would not be able to do the show tonight. Um, Now, the old me would have panicked (laughs) when I got an email, um, you know, planning all week for the show, and and, um, this is the first time I've been doing the show now since March, and this is the first time um, I've had a guest. Um, not be able to make it due to illness, and um, I understand. So I, I didn't. It didn't upset me in the least. I really just uh, emailed her, thanked her for letting me know, and asked her, you know, if he could come next week. And he can. He will be here next week. So, so for those of you who were really looking forward to hearing Kyle tonight, he will be on the show next Friday night. Okay, so I decided to go um, still do a live show, and the topic of the show uh, is finding the courage to follow your heart. Um, Actually, one of the things I want to share with the audience is yesterday, um, I live here, I live in the Poconos, and we've been getting a lot of rain. (laughs) It has, this month of July has been a very wet, uh, July for the Poconos. Um, yesterday was a beautiful day. There was not a cloud in the sky. And I had a, a lot of work to do on the computer. But my spirit told me, turn off that computer and go outside and enjoy this beautiful day. Um, I live near a lake, um, Lake Tobihanna. I live in Tobihanna, and um, Tobihanna State Park is like my backyard. So um, I turned off the computer, and even though my mind would have told me, you have too much work, you cannot go out and enjoy the day, you have to work, my spirit said, turn off that computer and go out to the lake. Um, That's where I really find um, myself very much at peace. I love the lake. I, I sit by the water. I meditate. I journal. I read. I was out there for four, about four and a half hours yesterday evening watching the sunset. Because what, what Spirit said to me yesterday was, what's more important than what I'm doing on the computer is keeping myself in alignment with my Spirit. And that's why my Spirit said, go out and enjoy the day and center yourself, align yourself. So partly when I got the email from Carrie um, earlier today, this morning, Um, I feel the reason I was not upset um, about it or panicky about not having a guest for tonight's show at all because of what I did yesterday. Because of going to the lake, 
taking that time to meditate, to read, to journal, to watch the sunset, to just be in the moment, that beautiful moment of now, um, the eternal perfect moment of now, and taking in all of the beauty that nature had to offer. And that truly did center me and align me with spirit. So this morning when I got on the computer, no problem. I'm just going to go with the flow, okay? We will still do a live show. Um, And I'm wishing uh, Kyle um, a speedy recovery, and he will be with us next week. So the reason I picked the topic, finding the courage to follow your heart, um, that's been on, um, that topic has been on my mind a lot lately because that's kind of what I am doing with this show um, and also with um, a nonprofit foundation I'm starting in my son's memory. Um, it was about six, seven months ago, uh, middle of, Je- well, early January, January 7th, um, Spirit told me at, at 1.30 in the morning, one one 1.30 a.m., I woke up and Spirit told me, just do it. And the just do it that Spirit was talking about was starting this found- starting a foundation in my son's honor. I had no idea how to start a foundation. And also doing an Internet radio show. Another thing, I had no idea how to do either. But I got up in the middle of the the night, got on the computer, and started researching how to start a nonprofit foundation and how to start my own Internet radio talk show. And so that's how I stepped out of my comfort zone. Um, my, My mind would have said, you don't have the resources. You, you've never done this before. Um, why do you think you could do that? Those are things my mind would have said to me. But I didn't listen to my mind at all that night. I, I just listened to spirit. And I didn't know what else was going to come. All I did, I knew how to take the first step, get online and Google what I want to do. Okay, how do you do it? Okay, uh, that was the first step. And um, I'm so happy I did that. Um, so um, a couple of points I want to, to express here is yesterday, like yesterday when Spirit told me to turn off the computer, it doesn't matter how much work you have to do. Work will get done. But what I needed to do at that moment, because I could feel myself just because of the, the work that I had to do and I felt like I had a lot on my plate, I could feel myself just tensing up a little bit. And that's when Spirit said, nope, don't tense up. Let's let's center. Let's meditate. Come back to center. Come back to your heart space. And that will always lead you in the right direction. So that's why finding the courage to follow your heart. And it, I can tell you from experience, it, it's not easy to um, to find that courage in this sense. It's not easy because... It's something you're really stepping out. When you step out of your comfort zone, you're pretty much alone. Um, when others around you are not seeing your vision or feeling your vision or others around you might put doubts in your head, others around you might tell you all those things that your mind would tell you, you don't have enough of this or that to do that. You know, how do you think you're going to manage? You know, that's what others around you might say. So when you step out of your comfort zone and you follow your heart, you truly are doing that alone. That's coming from within you, and um, that's something you're doing um, physically on your own. Um, you're, we're, we're spiritually, we're never alone. Um, we're always um, loved, protected, and spirit is always, once you're following, walking in spirit, Spirit always has your back, and I think that comes with your um, maturity in, in your, your spirituality. Uh, whatever your religion is, whatever your beliefs are, whatever your faith is, it's not a matter. It's not about religion or dogma or any of that. It's about following what is in your heart, and when you do that, you 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 just um, you're overwhelmed with joy because your soul is saying she's finally or he's finally doing 
what I'm guiding him or her to do. And doing the show, I really, it's just a joy. I love all of the guests. And I'm so thankful for all of the wonderful guests I've had. I love having the conversations I've had with them. Um, If it wasn't for this show, I would not have been in L.A. this past May at the Agape Revelation Celebration, which was amazing, Um, an experience that I will always keep with me. But the most wonderful experience I've ever had was this past um, May in L.A. at the Gopi Re- Revelations um, celebration. And that gave me a clear vision of what I want for the Kyle Center. The Kyle Foundation will fund a community center, basically, in this area called the Kyle Foundation. I mean, the Kyle Center. Now, the Kyle Center stands for not just my son's name is Kyle, who, um, I, who made his transition transition on July 1st of 2014. So just just a little over a year ago, my son made his transition. But the foundation is in his memory, but the uh, Kyle stands for Keep Your Light Expanding. So that's um, um, something that's always been kind of, di- actually even before, I have to say this, before my son even was I- ill, I always had it in my heart to start a nonprofit foundation and do some kind of a center. Um, with my son making his transition, it just kind of really pushed me more in that direction and gave me the name, <laughs> Kyle, Keep Your Light Expanding. So, um Centering, being centered and listening to your heart, not your head. I mean, we, our head, the brain and thoughts, and our head is important, our thoughts are important, but um, following our heart um, will lead us where we, we really want to go. And a lot of times our head will have no idea what, what we're doing and, and not know what, because the head wants to know the outcome. When you follow the heart, you don't, you won't know the outcome. You just know that by following your heart, you're you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Why you came into this existence. Um, now, the other thing that while I was communicating with Carrie um, today, Carrie is Kyle's assistant. She recommended. She said Kyle has a good friend. Um, by the name of Jason Freeman, who is also a, a comed, a com, ah, why do I have trouble with that word? Com, com, he also does comedy. Let's do that. He he does comedy. He's also a motivational speaker. And I took a glance at um, Jason's website, but because I was so busy today changing the show for tonight, I didn't have a chance to really go through Jason's website, but Jason is here with us, and he is going to share some of his story with us. Um, I'm bring- Jason, how are you? Oh, hi, hey, Caroline, I'm great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I know at the last minute, Carrie texted you, and she emailed me, um, and we were like, okay, <laughs> what are we going to do? But um, thank you so much for being with us. Um, please, like I said, I have not had a chance to really look at your website or really know too much about you. So can you please share with our audience how you are are following your heart? Okay. It, it's... Uh, so interesting, Caroline, you were just talking so eloquently about following your heart. And, and and that got me to thinking I was I was steadfastly determined for for most of my life not to follow my heart. Mm-hmm. The, uh, I I'm from the Midwest but but this isn't a a midwestern accent it's a a speech impediment okay and 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 i um i i have a speech impediment and some coordination 
differences as a result of a, a birth injury. I I was excited to come out into the world, so I came a few weeks early, and I surprised mm-hmm. my my folks in the middle of the night. Surprise! But right away, I knew it wasn't the good thing to do. P adults are either sleeping in the middle of the night or, or they're busy doing other things. And either way, they don't want to be disturbed. And, mm-hmm. and so on the way to the emergency room, I lost a little oxygen and hence developed the speech and the coordination. And for much of my life, I looked at the my speech. Oh, I heard my voice all the time, obviously, whenever I spoke. And I I looked at, at my coordination, like how I played sports as a kid, or uh, attempted to play. And and I'm like, I just don't like this. I'm not comfortable with this. So I I compensated by trying to go into my head and and be the smartest kid on the on the block. I I I tried to analyze everything to to pl- plan well to always have the answer to to be able to argue my to argue any point I thought was a was a worthy point, and 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 it, it I I did did okay, you know. I got through college and even through through grad school. I'm actually down in Nebraska for the ten year anniversary of my. Mm, my um program i i got a master's in of fine arts and poetry and congratulations it, yes hey well, thank congratulations you. Thank yeah you. thank you mm-hmm. and so i i was making it in life and i was was su- successful on, on the outside I had a I had a good job. I I lived in. I had my own, my own place. I I lived in Sioux Falls, the the city I have been in since I was three. Had lots of friends. Very successful on the outside, but but increasingly stressed out on the inside. I just had stress and worry that that would not go go away mm-hmm. and and what I know now in in retrospect is that I was so consumed with trying to create Jason Freeman as something I thought Jason Freeman should should be the exact way and and to get J- Jason Freeman perfect that I was was cutting myself off from the the wisdom of my heart mm, cutting yeah. myself off from the wisdom of my heart yes, does, does that make sense yes oh yes uh, I I believe um uh most of my life I I was in that same um mold I thought I had to do things to please others I was a very people pleaser mm-hmm. <laughs> you know I was a people pleaser so I was so busy pleasing other people I wasn't pleasing myself I wasn't listening to my internal um what I call my internal GPS my my soul guidance system, my spirit guidance system, because I was so busy trying to please other people and wanting to be wanting to be liked and wanting to be loved by others. When I know now that love comes from within me, so my mm-hmm. the love that I was looking for was always inside of me, not on the um, 
on the external. That was a, another thing I, I've learned in my my spiritual growth is that anything that everything that we're looking for is within us. We won't anything um, of value, love, joy, happiness, um, peace of mind. All of those things can only be found within us and not in the outer world. But the problem that most of us have is that we do look for those things. We look for peace. We look for love. We look for joy outside of ourselves. And we we don't find it, <laughs> you know, because the only place it can be found is from within. But continue on. Your, your, your story is fascinating. I also wanted to interject that I was also born premature. I was... Um, just three pounds, three point one. Oh wow! Pounds. Yes, at birth, I was born premature, and I was in on in an incubator for three months. Uh, I was born in mm-hmm. January, um, mid January, but didn't go home until mid March. So yeah, so I know about uh, being born premature. <laughs> so okay, but continue please with your story. You you, you were talking about. Well, looking for for love on the outside, and and that's uh, another thing I I did for much of my life. I I looked for for a, a girlfriend to 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 complete me, for to make up for what I thought I was lacking. Mm-hmm. That's so but, true. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, every, everything changed about about seven years ago when I began began doing doing yo- yoga. I I took the, took a step and went down to the Sioux Falls YMCA and and got a membership and did my first yoga class. Mm, okay. And 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 what I discovered. I mean, I I love the practice of yoga, but what what I discovered is that it wasn't just the yoga, but it was allowing my myself the the time to 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 tune in to me, like like yesterday, you have such a beautiful story about being on the computer and and all this to do and then going off to the lake and and ju- just tuning in and and y- yoga was my time to tune in and what what I discovered is that I was making i that i I was creating my own story at the time and I wasn't creating a a fantasy or a happy story but I I was creating a downright dismal sto- sto- story um with the major assumptions that uh, other people didn't like my my speech um, uh, I, I, yes. I discovered basically I was projecting my fear about my differences onto other people, and and once I got comfortable with my speech and, and coordination, <laughs> guess what? I, I discovered that people actually kind of love love them. People really like the sound of my voice. People. Don't mind my mm-hmm. coordination, and and it's just such a turnaround in, in perspective. Yes, you found that love within you, and because once you find that love within you, you project it out. See, so like mm-hmm. I was saying, yeah, and we all make that mistake. We've all looked for love outside of ourselves. But we are complete and whole. Even people say, I'm looking for the better half, that better half. No such thing. We are completely whole. And everything we have, anything of substance, of value, is found within. 
So when you tap into that love within, that joy within, that peace within, you radiate that love and that peace and that joy outward, and that's what reflects back to you. So that, I mean, it took, I'm 53, so, and it took me many, many years. I believe I awakened to that, I awakened to the universal truth of oneness in 2007. But I also awakened more so, and it was a gradual process, but I awakened to the fact that everything um, that I've been looking for my entire life, love, peace, joy, is found within. I kind of more so awakened to that in around 2010. Like I said, it's a gradual process. And it's been just this year, 2015, is where it's the first time I'm actually stepping out in that that following that spirit my spirit um internal gps this is the first first time i'm stepping out of my comfort zone first time i'm not listening to my head i'm only listening to my heart moment to moment day to day Mm -hmm. what does heart say what does spirit say you know and and following it and this year is the first time that i'm actually doing that and i it's it's amazing feeling, like you said. But please continue to share your story with us about seven years ago, how you started and discovered how to turn within with yoga and meditation, turning within and finding that love that you were looking for. And and what? And what? As you, as you say, it, it, it's a gradual process. I've I've been to to thousands of yoga classes. I I've I walk a lot. I a lot of in, introspection time. I now now I'm in the last year. I've started meditating. Um, but what what I've discovered. It is in fact the things I thought were work uh, like a curse or really bad luck. I mean, for most of my life, I was like, well, "Why did this happen to me? Why did a tragedy happen at my my birth? Why? 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 Why?" But mm-hmm. but now I know. Now I know that in fact. This miracle happened at, at my birth to to give me a, the gift of this voice, to give me the gift of this coordination, so I could could express my myself in a unique way that that would would, would t- touch other people in a in a special way. That is we, so true. That's so beautiful. Go ahead. That's beautiful. We, 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 I think as humans, it's na- natural for us to get in our heads and and be be a, be afraid of, of of our differences, be be afraid of being y- unique or or imp- imperfect, as our heads might say. But but nature is. Is powered by imperfection. Imagine if at the time of the amoebas, nature just said, "Oh, hey, I'm going to just keep creating perfect amoeba after perfect amoeba after perfect amoeba for for millenniums. We we, we wouldn't exist because." The le- I mean, we're all so far beyond the level of the perfect amoeba. So, in mm-hmm. a way, nature has had to allow itself to be imperfect, time and time and time and time again, to allow the this world we live in now to come into being. Does that well, make I'm- sense? Um, I hear what you're saying, but I actually, I, I, I look at that a little bit differently. Uh, my definition of the word perfect is just as it should be. That's my definition mm. of the word mm. perfect. So I say we are all perfect 
exactly the way we are because that is how the divine is playing mm-hmm. it, his, the role of this experience out. The divine wants to experience life through us, through each and every mm-hmm. one of us, uniquely. The divine wants us all to be unique, and the divine wants to experience that uniqueness. So I don't use the word imperfect. I say we Mm -hmm. are perfect because we are exactly as we should be. That's just me. Mm. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I I say each now moment is the perfect eternal now. And so Mm. I also find that, that being in the now, just uh, going with the flow and not resisting what is is also helps me to um, helps me to be more in alignment with spirit, with soul, because that's where you're gonna you're going to meet and find your soul in the now, not mm-hmm. yesterday, not tomorrow, in the now moment, in the eternal perfect now moment, and when you're listening to your heart and tuning into your heart and tuning into soul and following that guidance, wherever it leads you, it's going to lead you to a perfect place. So I I don't use the word imperfect. I say we're all perfect, exactly the way we are. Well, I I, I like it. You like that? Yeah. Okay. I, I like it. Okay. So tell us more about you. I know that I know today was like you got an email, I mean a text from Carrie, and I got the email from Carrie and was like, okay, we have to go with the flow, you know. And I love what you posted on. Um, can you share with the audience what you posted on Facebook, how you were just driving along and got this text today and and oh, your response? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was uh, um, e- – I I live in California, but my folks live. I came back to visit my folks in in southeastern South Dakota, and as part of my time, I actually am back to visit them because it's my 40th birthday coming up, Happy July 27th. Hey, thank you. So, okay. And and it just so happened that that. This reunion of my MFA program was going on in Nebraska, so so this morning I'm driving down I I 29 a little south of um, of Sioux City, and I get a text from from K and I I look at it quickly, and it's something while well, I'm driving and stay on the wall, but it's something about a podcast this afternoon, and I'm like, wow, that sounds cool. So I pull off at the next exit, some sm- small town truck stop, and I I call Kay, and she tells me the situation, and I say, say, Say ye- ye- yes, without without really knowing many of the specifics at all, and uh, and I I had no preparation. Doing a podcast today mm-hmm. was, was the farthest thing off my radar when I woke up this morning. But but I I, I say yes because I um. You're saying yes I, to the flow. I, I val- yeah, I value the flow and I value yeah. value newness and 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 I'm I'm confident enough in in my own voice and in my own perfection, as you you say. Now, yeah. just to say yes to what I want to do instead of thinking, oh, I'm I'm not worthy of 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 a podcast, what if I screw up? Just, just, it felt so easy and light to say yes and to go for it. That and, was wonderful. And we're, ta- we're talking. 
That is so wonderful. What you're saying is so it's so true. That's the thing is once we know who we are, we are the, a divine spark of God wanting to experience life through us. You are perfect. You are a divine spark of God, and you want to experience life. So saying yes to the flow is what you did. You just you didn't hesitate. You didn't think about it. You didn't say, "Oh, wait a second. Uh, I didn't prepare for this. I, you know, I didn't plan on this." And you didn't you didn't use your head. You used, you went with your heart. And that's mm. what going with the flow and how going with the flow is always going to lead us. Go following our heart is going with the flow of life. We're not resisting it. We're not resisting life. What is is we're going to embrace what is and look for the good in what is. I mean, there are many, we all go through difficult times in life. I just lost my son a year ago, so yeah. I know what difficult times are. Yes. So, But what I'm saying is what I have to do in every moment, look for the good because there is good in every moment. So I look for the good and then go with that flow of that good. It's what we focus on. Um, that's another thing. Since um, September, um, since um, yeah, about September 2010, around that time, um, I decided I wanted to have only positive conversations with everybody I spoke to. Okay, and I would express this. You know, at the beginning of a conversation with a friend, whoever, um, um, you know, I want to try to keep things positive. I want to keep my my attention on positive things. I stopped watching news in 2001. Mm. I have not watched a news broadcast in over 14 years. And I don't ever plan. Yeah, I don't ever plan to. I do news, and I, I'm on the computer all the time, so if something, and my neighbors all know I don't watch the news, so if something happens they, they think I need to know about, they call me, like, Caroline, this happened. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah. But I don't watch news because there's nothing on news, there is no good news on the news. And I know there's just as many bad things that happen in the world, just as many, if not more, Good things happen that day that does that does not get reported. So my focus and I and I made this conscious um, effort to stay positive. I made that um, September or August. No, it was August tenth, August tenth or August ninth, two thousand and no, August ninth, two thousand and ten. That's what it is. I'm good at certain days, certain dates. I'm good at. And I made that con- consciously. And I have conversations with people. And the funny, it's so funny, because they'll say, so many people that are negative don't think they're negative. Because they're like, they'll tell me ten bad things that happened. And they'll say, oh, but I'm positive about it. Then they'll keep continuing to tell me ten more bad things. Oh, but I'm positive. That's not being positive. I'm listening to your words. <laughs> And all you're talking about is negative, 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 negative. But the, because I said, because I made the announcement, I want to focus on positive conversations. I have so many people that will think they're positive and have a conversation with me, and it will be, I, I wish, a lot of times I wish I could record it. Because, like, listen back to this and tell me, please tell me if you really think that you had a positive conversation with me. But me personally, I've gotten to the fact, I used, that used to, like you said, it takes a while to evolve. And back in 2010 when I first started trying to have positive conversations with people and see, saw that I really wa- wasn't getting anywhere, um, I just had to, certain people, I just said, you know what, I love them. But it, when when I saw, saw found out that a person really was struggling trying to have a positive conversation, I just limited my conversations with them. Just not that I I still love them and care about them, and not that I'm not saying that because I'm trying to be positive and they're kind of stuck in the negative, which many people are stuck in the negative and news. That's what the news does, but. Um, I'm not saying I'm not. That's not a judgment. That's just an observation. Um, when I'm I'm trying to stay positive, I'm trying to talk about only positive stuff, 
and I talk to certain people, and it's like they cannot. I'll start out a conversation on a positive note, and they just go right into um, a negative topic. Okay, for example, um, I called my cousin the other day just to tell him about I was listening to Dr. Joe DePenza, uh, who was also um, at Revelation, Agape Revelation Celebration. He was one of the main presenters. Um, I was listening to a video of his. I live on YouTube, love it. I was listening to a YouTube video of his where he was talking about laughter, um, the study of how um, they did a study with laughter and patients that had diabetes. And so this cousin of mine thought he had diabetes, but he didn't. I mean, he was his doctor said he might have it, but he found out he didn't, which was good. But um, so I called him to tell him about the study. They did this study where patients that have been diagnosed with di- type 2 diabetes, they would put them in a room with a comedy show or co- a funny movie or something to make them laugh. And they had these patients laughing, I mean really laughing hard for over an hour. And when they Aww. test their 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 insulin insulin level after with a time when they normally would have to take insulin, they did not have to take it. So wow. it's, it's yes, it's so amazing. And even um in the I don't know, are you familiar with the the D V D The Secret, the movie The Secret? Oh yeah. Well, oh yeah. Oh yeah. You are. Okay. Well I never forget in that D V D in that documentary there was a lady that was diagnosed with cancer and she went home and she made sure she laughed every day. She watched comedy after comedy after comedy, and laughter is how she cured herself. So by the time she went back to the doctor, she had no cancer. And I know a lot of people listening to this, is, you know, it's they're like, oh, that's not. You know, a lot of people, it's, but it's your belief, too, about things. We create our reality from our core beliefs. So... If if you can't believe that laughter, laughter is the best medicine. So that's why I love what Kyle is doing. And I love it. Are you also a comic? Because that's what uh, Carrie had said. Are you are you a comedian as well? Yeah, yeah I, I, um, as, as I, I give talks, I'll, I'll find things funny in the moment and, and I'll comment on them and, and in mm-hmm. the audience lo- lo- loves it, so so it's right. not like I sit at home and and write jokes, but right. But well, in actually, the moment, I when you find out joke. Kyle doesn't write jokes either. <laughs> well, I've been listening yeah, to him a lot on YouTube, and he <laughs> just he's like, I don't prepare, I just get out there and I evolve out loud. That is basically what he's doing. So it's all, and the same thing with this show. I don't prepare. I just, I, I, I invite people that have inspired me, and and I'm discovering new teachers, speakers, authors, almost daily. At least two or three a week, I'm discovering new ones that inspire me. So I'll email them or Facebook them and and message them and ask them to be a guest. That's how I get my guests. But um, when I I just ask them on and then have a conversation, you know. So it's not a lot of preparation or anything like that. It's just being being your authentic self. That's what comes from following your heart. You are living your authentic life. You are being uniquely you perfectly, uniquely you, and that's what the divine God, the universe, whatever name or you have for him, he answers to all names, Allah, God, universe, source, whatever name you have for him, he will answer to it, and all he wants to do is live through you. That's why you, that's what we came mm-hmm. into this body to do, is we are connected to the divine. We are a part of the divine. We can never be disconnected. Even we can think that we're disconnected from God, um, and that's hell. You know, thinking that you're disconnected from God—that is your own created hell. 
but we can never truly and um, universal ultimate truth. We can never be disconnected um, from God, and God wants to experience life through us as us, unique, and we're mm-hmm. all unique, and we all have unique gifts to share with the world. And when you start sharing those unique gifts with the world, you just you feel. I after every show, I feel high. I don't. I've never done drugs in my life, and when I was younger. Um, I was like a teen, pre-teen, yeah, teenager and preteen, um, and some of my friends were were starting to experiment with marijuana and stuff. They say to me, Caroline, don't no, don't you ever touch it. Don't try to do drugs because you are naturally high. This has just always been my personality. I just always been. But when I when I'm doing what I'm passionate about, when I'm following my passion and following my heart. I feel high. Like, I don't need marijuana. I don't need anything else other than following my heart. So, yes, yeah, so please tell us more. I want, to, I want to learn more about you, and I do want to invite you um, to be a guest um, where I'm once, you know, once I have time to just really promote you, because that's the other reason I had said to, Carrie had said to have have you fill in as a guest, but I was thinking it wouldn't be fair to you because I promoted Kyle all week, (laughs) and I do that for all my guests. I promote them all week, and I want to be able to promote you all week for your upcoming guest appearance. So today we're just kind of having a, you and I having a, Chit chat, and we're we're getting to know one another. So tell tell uh, the listeners a little bit more about your story. I know you started seven years ago, and your speaking engagements. Tell us what you might have coming up in the near future. Oh, one of, one of them I'm really excited about is is Kyle sees is having another evolving out loud, but mm-hmm. but. This one's going to be the previous ones have the biggest before has maybe been three hundred people but but this one Kyle has booked the the Alex theater I think it's called in in Glendale and there's a a thousand four hundred seats so mm, so okay. it's pretty exciting to is a far bigger than, stage than I've ever spoken on before. Oh, so you will actually be speaking at the Evolving Out Loud, and, and that's in August? Um, yeah, how, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think the first weekend of August, I don't have my calendar, or actually I do have my calendar. I'm so used to saying I don't have my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's August, August eighth and ninth, and and I was telling my dad yesterday that I was getting a little nervous about speaking to such a big group, and he he's like, "You're always just speaking to people, Jason, whether it's one person or." Or fifty thousand. It's 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 sh- it's sharing stories like like you do so well, Caroline. I on the show you 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 give people to to share stories, share what what's important to them, to share how how spirit is working through them, and and you really celebrate that, which which is amazing. My my part of my healing has has definitely come from being able to to share share a new story and, and to release release the old st- old stories. I I I used to have so many things I didn't want to say, say out loud. See, see secrets. You you know um. And and I I think holding stuff in in for a long period period of time is just hard on the heart. 
Yeah, you you know what I mean? It's Yes. Yes, yes. And yes. Holding it in and actually that holding stuff in, stress and all of that holding stuff in is what causes all of our ailments. You know, illnesses mm. and and disease because the the divine is here to to express through us to so we're supposed to be ourselves, not be afraid to be not be afraid to be different, not be afraid mm. to be yourself, and just you know. So I I understand exactly what you're saying. Let me just I did did say to the um, like I said this is a new show. Most of my um, audience listen to the replay, but let me um, open say to the, everyone who's listening. If anyone out there is listening live and would like to call in and share maybe their story of um, overcoming, um, finding the courage to follow their heart. If anyone out there like to share a story, please give us a call at 347-857-1083. It's only, we only have about eight minutes left in the show, about nine minutes left in the show. I'm sorry, I meant to uh, mention that earlier. Um, but I, like I said, it is a new show, and not many live listeners. I notice, I do see that there's many more listeners that listen um, to the replay. So, like your dad was saying, um, talking to one person is the same as talking to hundreds of people because you are actually talking to hundreds of people um, through this show, Jason. Because even if people are not listening right at this minute with podcast, which I love, Internet Radio, um, a podcast can be listened to any time, any place, any um, um, anytime, any place, as long as a person has a computer. I have gotten emails from uh, Malaysia, from Africa, from Canada. Oh. I've gotten e- emails from people from all over the world letting me know that this show has inspired them, which is wonderful because um, I I think of it as residual inspiration. So I do the show (laughs) one hour a week, (laughs) you know, one hour a week, and it's on the Internet for life. And and someone (sighs) may listen to this show two years from now and be inspired. You know, so oh. you are, through this show, you are, are speaking to several hundreds of people. And I under, but I do understand what you mean about the, the getting the jitters. Um, I get very relaxed once I'm on air, but I'm always a little nervous before a show starts. And I, like I said, I've only been doing this since March. This is very new. Um, I know as time goes on, I'll get... I'm very comfortable doing the show. Um, it's just that that little bit of jitters you get before mm-hmm. the show starts. But once the show starts, I'm in my element. <laughs> you know, I I am fine. So that is wonderful that you are speaking at Kyle's event, uh, Evolving Out Loud. I wish I could attend. Um, actually, the first time I've ever was on the West Coast, was this past May, and I got to experience that wonderful experience because I had um, Reverend Michael Beckwith as one of my guests, and he invited oh. me. Yes, he invited me, and I could not say that. That, wasn't, that was like when you got the text from Carrie uh, this morning um, to ask you about this podcast, that when, when Michael invited me, to come out to L.A. to be his guest at the Revelation uh, celebration, I'm thinking to myself, ah, I, first of all, I've never been to L.A., not afraid to go to the West Coast, but I've never been to the West Coast, and I'm thinking, financially, can I afford it? And I'm thinking, you know what? I don't care. I will I will find the money. I will go. And I did. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I did. I, that was me saying yes to the flow when I went to L.A., and to and it was the most amazing experience I've ever had, and it gave me a clear vision of what I want. 
for the Kyle Center here in the Poconos. I mean, a perfectly clear, clear vision. So I, I'm just, it's, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited Beautiful. as to what is ahead. I don't know what's ahead. I know I have a clear vision, but I, and I don't know what's going to get me there. But the important thing is not holding on to expectations. Things not holding on to how things have to unfold, or or even holding on to your vision. I have a vision, but not being so invested in the outcome. Be just go with the flow and enjoy the journey. Mm. That's what I mm. believe life is more about. You know, going with the flow and enjoying the journey, and not being so stuck and invested on the outcome. The outcome it is what it is. It's gonna be what it it's gonna be what it's gonna be. And whatever it is, it's good. It's all good, especially when you're following your heart. It's all good. So I am so so happy that you um were able to to um fill in basically. You did a wonderful job filling in for Kyle. And I hope, Kyle, you have to let Kyle know you did a great job and he has to listen to this replay when he's feeling a little bit better. Yes, I am so, so thankful. And I can't believe the hour does go by really, really fast. Is there is there anything you want, to, other um, speaking engagements that might be coming up? I know you're going to be um, first weekend of August. Um in not LA, where what where is the um uh, uh, oh, uh, it, it, it's a sub suburb of LA it's um, it's a suburb I of think LA. it's in Glendale. Um Okay. I I'm not even sure I'm from South I'm still learning the ins and outs of Southern California. Oh, okay. It, and that's where you live you live in Southern California now. Yeah, I I live yeah. in San Diego now. Oh, okay. All right. I did enjoy my trip to the West Coast, but I love the Pocono Mountain. I've been I've been here in the Pocono Mountains now for almost 25 years. I raised both my children here. Um I actually purchased my dream home at the age of 29. Oh. <laughs> and here here in the Poconos. Yes. I I just I love I'm just like I say I'm close to my lake. I love boating. I have a jet ski. I go jet skiing. I'm I'm in heaven. This is my heaven on earth right here in the Poconos. Oh. So Nice. I don't want want to move to the West Coast. I would love to visit again, but my my vision and my mission is to bring agape um, celebration here, and also to bring to have the Kyle Foundation be very similar to what I experienced at the agape <sighs> revelation. That is oh, my that vision. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, so I, I assumed you heard the agape choir, too? Yes. Oh, yes. I heard the... Oh, oh they were amazing. Aren't they wonderful? All, all the performers were amazing. I mean, it was... Oh, I mean, it was such an amazing experience. It really was. I, I was just... I was in awe. I was, I was just in awe. So we are already down... To the hour, it, we've got a minute left in the show. So, and I don't like it when Blog Talk Radio, when the hour's up, it just c- cuts you off. So I don't want that <laughs> to happen. <laughs> I don't. Oh goodness! I, somebody's outside. It is not the Fourth of July, but there are fireworks going off on my block. But um, well. I want to let you go and thank you so much. You enjoy. <laughs> the reunion um, in Nebraska, and you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, Jason, and we will keep in touch. Okay, Jason? Yeah, yeah, yeah we will. I would love to be on your sh- sh- show again sometime. That would be great. Okay, you have a good night. Cool, okay. you, you too. Thank you. Okay, good night. Good night.